these phenomena, they happen in, like you said, they're part of their nature. And they in, the beasts are still in their nature. Remember we talked about last week how about nature. And the one that's not in his nature is man. Mankind is not in his nature. But everything else around him, even as defiled as it is, it still maintains his nature and what's natural. So that's why every morning, it don't mean nothing to a lot of people, like you said, because they, they not even the witnesses. Morning, you'll hear the birds gather in the trees and they'll let you know it's not something that's just done. They are signal because they're in tune, they're in harmony with everything. Else. They are signaling when the day starts. See, that's part of the message. That's part of the message to one another. They about to start. It's time for us. See, that, that's it, it's hold this. That's why this song is so is so beautiful. Hold this and go to Psalms 104. I love them show too, especially when they verify the word of the Almighty. You know, many people don't, many people don't regard them, but they should. His creation, the beasts of the field, fowls of the air. Matter of fact, at the at the class. And we uh, we said and you know, we be saying things we be talking, but we we gonna stop talking. Right the class, we, I got y'all remind me make an announcement. Uh, we gonna set something up, especially for the you, you sisters that handle the children. That's who I really want to remind, because it's really for them. This is really for them. Psalm 104? Yes. Hallelujah. And, oh well, yeah, we are. Hallelujah. There. Yes, we are. Psalm 104. Go. Hallelujah. Bless Yahweh. We're going to see some. We're going to see something here. Oh, my soul. So I'm just flapping my, my gun. But we, this is more than information. Go. Bless Yahweh, O oh my soul. O oh Yahweh, my Elohim. Thou art very great. Here this song is stating again. Bless Yahweh, my soul. Bless him. Now let me let me say something. In this world, how many people get up and bless Yahweh? Hallelujah. Uh, yeah. Huh? Not many do that. Because they don't even know. Him. So how can you bless that? Would you have no idea even exists? You have no concept, no concept of it. Now that's not the sad part in totality. See? As I said, listen to words. I said in this world, how many people? Right. Now I'm about to ask another question. And in this world, how many people that know y'all get up and bless him? See them two different people. The first set, they don't even know it. The second set, they know it. But do they get up and bless him? And again, that number is very small. small. But here the song that said, the first thing I do when I get up, bless Yahweh. Is I bless Yahweh. Oh my soul. Oh my soul. The best. The best. Oh my soul. Oh my body. 
Not rule, I put in that flesh. My body, my soul. That way, when I get up, the Ruach is returned to me. The Spirit is returned to me. I physically, in my soul, my body, when the Spirit comes back, I physically, with my body, give it over to blessing Yahweh. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, Yahweh, my Elohim, thou art very great. Thou art clothed. With honor and majesty. And you shall be blessed because you're very great. You're very great. And your clothing, your clothing is honor and majesty. Who covereth thyself with light as with a garment. Who covereth thyself with light, not darkness, with light. Oh, God. Eternal light. The light of day. All right. That which you can see, light. That's why it's written light, not day. You cover yourself with light. Who stretches out the heavens like a curtain. And that's why he covered himself with light. Let there be light. And there was light. Oh, yeah. And the light he called day. And the darkness he called equated it with night. And he never blessed the man and said, I'm going to bless you and put you. I want you to be in darkness when I bless you. He said, I will bless you and I bless you to see the light. So he would have no mind. He would have no backward mindset that if he bless you and he always equated light with blessing, light with knowledge, light with seeing. And why would he have a backward mindset and say, that's the blessing is going to be the start of a new day when it darkens? Hmm. You can't see nothing. He clothed himself, covered himself with light and with a garment, and he stretched out the heavens like a curtain. Who led the beams of his chambers in the waters? Who make it the cloud his chariot? Yes, they look like when they're moving, the fronts is moving. Yes, sir. We went outside and last week and saw what they call in this scientific fronts. Me and my son are looking at that's the clouds as they move. You can see sometimes you can see one. That's what when you're watching them in the news and they say the front. That's what they're talking about. They just simply talking about the clouds. And how they're moving, how they carry it on the wind. Well, it says in euphemism, these clouds are like chariots that the Almighty ride on. And the Cain, one of them chariots, touched down. Touched down. Yes, sir, it did. So a whole lot of stuff. See, I don't know. Many of y'all don't know. It's a phenomenon. Yes, it is. The wind was the wind for a brief moment. Me and my son was out there. The wind for a brief moment was very strong right in this corridor right here. The trees were swaying. See, y'all was in here praising the Almighty. The trees were swaying. They were moving, not just slight, they were moving, swaying. The wind was strong. And then it just all of a sudden seemed to dissipate and pass on by. And I made a remark to my son. I said, I wonder. I don't know if he remember. I said, I wonder where these winds don't go. I said, where are they going to go? Go ahead. Who walketh upon the wings of the wind? Oh, yeah. See, this is what I'm saying. This book is it's real. Who maketh his angel spirits? Who maketh his angels messengers? His ministers a flame and fire. And his ministers, them that talk about him, them that preach him and teach him, they're like a flame of fire. 
who laid the foundations of the earth that it should not be removed forever. Cannot remove the foundation of the earth forever. Thou covers it with the deep as with the garment. The water stood above the mountain. And that's why it can't be removed because man ain't going to never be able to get to the foundation of the earth because the Almighty has sealed it in the very depths of the water. That's why they diving, deep sea diving, but they won't get there because the Almighty will not allow them. It's just certain things that man won't accomplish. And that is to find the depths, the depths of the earth. As great as the technology is, they haven't built a ship yet that can survive the very depths of the earth. It gets crushed. It must emerge. The pressure, the pressure within it is like a can. It'll start, the deeper it goes, it'll start just crushing in. That's why even a sub, it can go, yes, it's built and designed to go extended periods of time underneath, but there is a limit that, a, that the nautical soldier is monitoring and when he hit that limit he said okay we got to come up now we got to bring it up now because it's going to reach that limit of pressure where it'll start it'll start like a can getting crushed so we gotta we gotta emerge yes, sir. go ahead as I rebuke, they fled. At the voice of thy thunder, they hasted away. That's what the waters do. They go up by the mountain. Mm -hmm. They go down by the valley yes. into the place which thou hast founded for them. Uh -huh. This is said in a pretty picture. Yes. The waters go up into the mountains. When he pushes them away, the waters go up into the mountains. Why do you think the ark rested on Mount Area? Because when they surged, when they went up, they went up so high that they covered the mountain. But when the Almighty spoke and crawled back up the heavens and sealed it back up, those same waters, they were in the mountains and they started cascading down from the mountains. And as they cascaded down from the mountains, the ship was able to settle on that plateau of Mount Area. As the water ran down the mountains, back into the valleys, creating streams. See, the water run from the high places and come down. Yes. <laughs> you know what I said? This is ancient. What we have in our hands is more than just, and we don't use it. This is ancient. This is ain't this is why y'all might say you the ancients. This is ancient knowledge. Yeah. Yes, sir. He is talking about things, but long before any schools of Harvard and Yale and Princeton, scientific academies. He's telling things that were done. In creation, in prehistory, that's still done today. And one, one of the beer companies, when you when you see their advertisement, mm -hmm. the guy standing behind mountains, mountains or in front of mountains, the snow caps, on. the snow caps, and he said, he said, this comes out of the this beer comes out of the water that come down from these mountains and run into these streams where I'm standing. That's what they're trying to sell you. Hey, this is this beer is pure. Yeah. You say that all it come from there? I gotta go. Even one of the water companies, that's what they call themselves. Ice. Yeah. Yes, sir. Now, in many cases, 
they, she would call it ice falsity. So that's all it came out of, was just the falsity. But their marketing strategy is great. Yeah. So they slap mountain range on there, and ice mountain, and you, wow, this is, and all of them use it. Yeah. The mountains of Switzerland. Glacier. Glacier. <laughs> That's why it costs for one bottle two seventy nine. Because this is the good stuff. Beezy Be mountains. It costs three dollars and twenty nine. Because it's the good stuff. And it got tapped right out of right down there. In the <laughs> metropolitan. <laughs> Thou hast set a bound, thou hast set a bound that they may not pass over, that they turn not again to cover the earth. He set a bound to make sure that they don't on their own flood. Natural bound. Natural bound. Rock formation. See when they when the waters is running down and it and it runs over. The earth, the dirt, the soil, and it takes it away. It's creating, it's doing what the Almighty has told it to do, the command he's given it, and it's creating natural boundaries. When it leaves, you take away the earth, but you have the rocks. They set up natural boundaries. Natural boundaries. Go ahead. They make their own trenches and tributaries. Go ahead. There are a set of bounds that they may not pass over, that they turn not again to cover the earth. He sendeth the springs into the valleys, which run among the hills. They give drink to every beast of the field. Yeah, you've seen that in the show, man. Yeah. Hmm? They all come to the water hole. All, all, all kind. All, all, all kind. Huh? That's why I say That's why I said, see, now you're gonna get a glimpse of it. See, this is why you gotta believe the word of the Almighty. People be, I don't I can't believe that. When the Almighty said in the future, you could see that the lion and the ox can lay down together. When you can see the arm, when you can see these animals coexist in the future. Yes. You can believe that because I can see it and do see it. If you watch it, you see it right now. Right now. Every time the beasts of the field are not as ferocious as this man would have you believe, or there would not be beasts of the field. They don't kill like the beast, two legged beasts kill. They kill for the sake of what they call the circle, like this movie, the circle of life. They kill for food. They kill for survival when they're threatened. That's the two major motivating factors, food and survival or being threatened. Other than that, once the lion has killed and ate his food, you can send a whole herd right of wildebeest right by him, and he's going to lay there and just chill. He's not going to jump up and say, I just ate one, but I need to kill me another one. He's going to lay there, and he's going to look, and they're going to run by, and he's going to just... <laughs> <laughs> now, if he haven't fed, if he hungry, that's his motivating factor. Mm -hmm. And the other time they... You see the violence come out of them, like I said, is when it's survival. They're threatened. When one lion will raise up to challenge another lion because he perceived that that lion has ruled long enough. If one male, if one alpha gorilla perceived that another gorilla has ruled long enough. But the beautiful thing about it is what people don't understand. The beauty, even that is an anomaly because most of the time the gorillas they have the divine sense and the divine nature to know, hey, this cat rules, 
until he can't rule no more. Mm -hmm. got too old. Now we got and this is man. instinctive. Then there's a battle amongst the younger primates or gorillas. There's a battle amongst themselves, knowing that this one is about to go. Now they battle for supremacy. So you get that quick little heavyweight battle till somebody get bah, block knocked off and, and he don't want no more. And then that next one know he's next in line. But Harambe sat over there at the Cincinnati Zoo for years with no challenges. See, I go to the zoo. <laughs> and when I go, I ain't going, I ain't spending my money, just go there and be. Uh, I'm going looking for the word of the Almighty to be verified. Harambe sat there for years. And you can see it. He sit right on the stoop. He sat right on the stoop where he always sit every day. And you see all of them, the females, the young ones, the young, the young, and you see them, how they interact with him. And all he's doing is he's sitting there and he look around. He just monitors. But nobody running up on. Uh, and they come up, they come up, you see them. That's correct in the movie, when you see them do like this. It's the just of submission. The other one that they killed, take it, they say taking his teeth out. And they doped him up. They were scared. You already done hit him and doped him up. I know what happened. Ain't nothing but it, probably his hand slipped off the table and they thought he was waking up. So they hit him with some more stuff and they hit him with too much and couldn't bring him back. Well, he just didn't make it. He, and these gorillas have ruled for years. Lions rule for years. They rule prize for years. It's not until they, they, stick, they get very, very, very weak. And it's instinctively known that they weak. That you get another that raises up. Or unless one comes from miles away and intercedes in another, being a renegade and intercedes in another pride. And oftentimes, he first, before he gets to the male figure, he first gets chased off by the pack of females. See? Thought that Black Panther was just something they do together. No, there's, there's a reason why the Black Panther was surrounded by what? His spirit, his guard, or what? Women. Because the motherly nature and the nature of nurse and the nature of protection is in the woman. And she will fight even to her death. When it's something that she truly cherished. Yeah. <laughs> now, brothers, you got the, they have the same thing in them, but it's aroused in a different way. But they have the same thing in them. That's why David, he didn't have female, he had men. But he had men, he had men, not just men, he had men of war. Men that have a nature that love to throw down. That ain't every man. No, it's not. Not saying he's not a man, but that ain't every, these were some special kind of men. That's why they did special things. They just, <laughs> that's what they, they when they're born, they just look in their eyes and say, oh, yeah, he just, he's a thumper. Because if you wasn't that kind of man, you wasn't in that company. You hang with them, but you wasn't in that company. I dare say they scared David. Like I said, when they went and got that water, they scared him. Man, what is this? These fools, I thought I was crazy. These fools crazy. 
But I love them to death. Watch where you walk. Verse 11, though, back to this. Drink to every beast of the field. The wild asses quench their thirst. And you can see it. They, they animal meat at the water hole. Hippopotamus, jackals, all kind of animals, birds out of the air come. They meet at the water hole. And nobody be fighting and nobody be miles around. So, yes, yeah, someone made a trek from miles around. Zebra, gazelles. Come all over the Serengeti Plains, Tanzanian Plains. Then look at what verse 12 says. Catch this. By them, By them shall the fowls of the heavens have their habitation. Do the fowls of heaven make their habitation? We sing among the branches. We do what? Sing among the branches. Did it say they sing? Yes, sir. On the branches. On the branches. Huh? They sing. They sing. And they sing every morning. Oh, God. Every morning. I know because I'm up. Before light comes, you'll know it's coming because they start singing. In unison. As a chorus. In the trees. And it's another phenomenon. They also do. And they sing at unison in the chorus. They repeat this process in the evening. Yes, they do. Hallelujah. Yes, they do. And then all night long, you won't hear. Silence. Now, why won't you hear? See, because it's not all, this is what the Almighty done. It's not all foul. Why won't you hear the birds of flight that you see in the day? Because that's who's singing. Why won't you hear them chirping and, and putting up a records like they do when the day beginning and when it's ending? Why won't you hear them do that at night? They resting, sleeping. Not only that. And hiding from the beasts. And they hiding not only from beasts, they hiding from other birds. A prey that prey at night. Yes, sir. Because the species, just like me, the species have their times. The robin, the cardinal, the red bird, the blue jay, they have their time. And then they give way to the birds of and the fowls of air, such as the owl and the gray owl and the bat and the lapwing. These are the things that rule the skies at night. That rule the skies at night. The owl, when you go to the zoo and you go in the house of, of the bird, the, it's dark, it's pitch black. There's a little light so you can see, but you see what you see in there, you see these big eyes looking at you. And his head is able to turn on that radius. And them eyes are very, very good. Don't miss a beat. But the birds that's given to the day, they break forth in singing. Then you know that this is their time. And when the day is over, they break forth in another song, letting you know, letting them all know. Our time has passed. He watered the hills from his chambers. Mm -hmm. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of thy works. Yes. He causes the grass to grow for the cattle. He causes to grow for the cattle. And the herbs for the service of man. And the herbs that come up for the service of dandelions. Yes. Bitter root. Bitter root. Bird dot. Oh, see, one has to do is get knowledge of. It. But this for the service of man. What kind of service? Parsley. Healing body. Healing his body. Parsley. Sir. Basil. Thyme. Wild thyme. Wild green onions. You go in the backyard. I went in my buddy's backyard. Put up a bunch of 
such as wild green onions. Most people look at them and say, well, they, I throw them things away, them weeds. Them ain't weeds. Mm-hmm. You can grab them wild green onions. You grab them, you prune them, you get them in the kitchen, you chice, you chop them, and you dice them, and you put them in, and you cook with them. Um, yeah. And they naturally don't even have to grow no, they naturally grow abundantly out of the earth. Yes, they do. And you pull them up, you want to know if they're ripe, you smell them. They smell just and if they have a strong smell, then they're ready to be used. He make the herbs for the service of man. That he may bring forth food. That he may what? Bring forth food. Out of the earth. There it is. Yeah. Wine that he may make what? Glad the heart of wine. man. Get that wine that he may make glad the heart of man. Yeah. Yeah. And the little wine make glad the heart of man. Huh? Yes, sir. Make it glad, don't it? Yes, sir. And Go ahead. And oil to make his face to shine. Huh? Or crush up the herb. Huh? You eat the residue on your that's all. You rub that on your on your skin, rub that on your face to make the face to shine. Oh God. Bread which strengthens man's heart. And bread, the wild barley. Oh God. The aviv. Good bread. Good bread. The wheat, the rock. That strengthens man's what? Heart. Heart. And bread, if it's good bread, see, you never thought about it. And yeah. some people are going to say, no, you don't eat bread. You don't eat bread. Yeah. Drink yeah. Hard. Yeah. Yeah. But, sugar. but bread, if it's good bread, That's right. it yeah. helps yeah. the heart. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's one thing that Ezekiel it strengthens, it strengthens the heart. The trees of Yahweh are full of sap. They're full of sap. No this butter work. <laughs> like we had to buy. That's flavored and colored and I in Westwood, I used to be able to go there and I, I got a fine fat. They, they all over. They tra- could even travel. But I remember one year, lady came up and and you couldn't even you couldn't even get none from her if you didn't catch it right. Because she just sell out when, when she comes. If you got that too, she it's gone. But she brought the most dynamic. I understood why. She brought the most dynamic. American soda. Somebody else that was up there on Tap. the main road. Uh-uh. Oh. No, nah, this was on Westwood North. Tap right out of the tree. Mm. And she having the little cups. You can even you can drink. It's clear. And you can even drink. I mean, this done. You don't even need pancakes. You you get that, you just drink it. <laughs> it was so good. And when she say it's tap, it wasn't no marking. You could taste the dip. It's tap right out of a tree, on um, acres of the land where she lived, where they got big trees and they don't do nothing. But at the at the time of year when the sap has risen in the tree, they go out and just tap them. Boom, boom, boom. But she doesn't got a season. Yeah. That's why she ain't there all summer. See, they're doing that season because after the, the sap has risen, it comes back down. And after they tap it, it comes back down. But it's some of the best. It's some of the best. Sir, your lips, mm. it don't ever have touch. Uh, yeah. And it's all natural. Right gracious. Oh, yeah. Keep going. The trees of Yahweh are full of sap. The cedars of Lebanon, which he had planted, where the birds make their nests. Mm-hmm. As for the stork, 
the fir tree or the house. Yes. The high hills are a refuge for wild goats. For wild goats. And the rocks for the conies. Not cheap, Coney. Not talking about gold star skyline. I'm Coney. A badger. He appointed the moon for season. Now he appointed the what? The moon for season. Got the got the wind. It's the light. One of the first things he said, he appointed the moon. Now, something wrong. Oh, yeah. Something wrong. And this ain't a matter of what a man saying. This scripture. Brother Bennett, is this scripture? Huh? Tell me, Brother Bennett, is this scripture? And what did he say right here is for seasons? Huh? Say it again. He said the moon. He didn't say something else. He said the moon he appointed for seasons. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gracious. Oh, yeah. I can't go with him. How do we go wrong? Listening to man. Who, who can tell me something else then? Listening to man. Only way this is not valid is if we take our pens and just scratch it out, or we take our hands and rip out. So we can't just rip this. We rip this whole song 104. We rip it out. But then if you do that, you cast everything in here before this. You're saying there's a lie. All right. Certain animals, um, so birds and whatnot, that made their eggs the according to the moon. Yeah, that's, right. that's right. That's right. Not that's only right. certain, everything. Everything. Yeah, yeah, even plants. Everything. Uh, yeah. But the moon ain't for seed. Everything. That's why when Moses spoke the great knowledge he spoke, he said, for the precious thing right. given by the moon. By the moon. By the moon. Because although the sun gives you photosynthesis, although the font, the sun works and works with the chlorophyll, the greenery, the color, the moon, because of what it does and its attraction to water, the moon pulls water out of the earth at night. That's the reason why when you wake up, because you then went through night with a full moon and the moon. That's the reason why you wake up with dew upon the earth. Place. Everywhere. You wake up the grass, the plants, everything is wet in the early morning. Because the moon has pulled that water, the reserve of water, out of the earth. Oh, God. And the sun knows. It's going down. It's going down. Now make it darkness. And it is night. It's a new day. It was night. It's night, not a new day. It's night. Stop that. Everybody know we start a new day. When it gets dark. If you call closing your eyes and sleep a new day, okay. <laughs> But it, it, it clearly says, Thou makest darkness. It clearly said, What? Thou makest darkness. And what is that? And it is night. And it is night. Hallelujah. Wherein all the what? The beasts of the forest do creep forth. See, maybe that's what we need to do. Maybe we need to find some forest or something. Go camp. Yeah. You don't understand this. And when you get when you try to stay out there and being active, and you hear all these, yeah. um, you don't get your tail, uh, and you can't see, because like I said, our sight diminishes at night. Their sight increases. And while all them shows negative and afraid, and all them shows with people be stranded, they want to build shelter. They say let's build shelter. We done touch down. Let's build shelter. Let's build shelter before night falls. But so we're not exposed. But when they be sleeping in the shelter, when they be laying up, they be sleep trying to sleep. They hear stuff out. You hear that? There's something out by the camp. 
And you see the line because the camera will pick up them and it be creeping around and it be walking around camp and they be just as scared as I don't know, I don't know what. And so, ooh, so we just lay here like we hope it don't pick up the scent, hope the fire keep it at bay. But they, that's they time to creep. Now, if they won't be out there, I'm adventurous. That's what I came here for. Then go on, I, go on out there. Y'all call me a new partner in here. <laughs> I'm gonna need one. He keep going out there to me. He here and get jacked up. <laughs> last night, they out during the day, but last night, come on out my door, little cat, little kid cat, just on the prowl, Jack. All over the neighborhood. I said, look at him. He up and down the street. Dude, just all over the place. Little joker acting. Yeah. Because it was his because it was nighttime. Right? It's his time. All the little cats are. It's his time. The young lion roar after they pray and they seek their food. They seek their food from Elohim. They know and understand they get their food from Elohim. The sun arises. They gather themselves together. Here we go. And they lay down in their dens. And it's time for man to go. See, this is how I know a day starts in, with the sun, with the light, and not at night. This is key. The lions, the beasts of the night, they gather themselves together and they go and get in their dens because they're creatures of the night. And the day is made for man and it's made for man to do what? What is it made for man to do? His work. It's made for man to go forth and do his what? Work. work. And, and to his labor. And to his labor until, until the evening. evening. Until the end of the day. When he, at that time, goes home and gets in his den and chills and gives way to the beast <coughs> of the night. And how many periods is man supposed to work and do all his labor? Six days. Six days. Shall he work and do all, all his, his labor. labor? And here is your barometer of when you do your work and all your labor. When the sun arises, when the day is in, and up until evening. Yeah. And you do that for six days. And on the seventh day, you rest from doing that. But you rest from when? The same period. From the sun arise, the morning, to the going down the evening. See everything. We can finish reading it because it just goes to the book. Everything is in harmony. And you can learn. I've heard on the radio there was there was incidents, and then we're gonna now get ready to give me because this came on the heels of her of a comment. But I had to address this. But at SeaWorld, they had an incident where some of the young whales had had died. died. Yeah, they died. And so you had a grouping of just female whales grouped together and begin to give out this cry. They just grouped together and they begin to give out this cry. And they died kind of subsequently because some of the way the young ones died because of the way they were being treated. But the group of females got together and began to give out these cries. 
Well, they would cry when they found out what they when they studied them. They said, "What is that? What they doing? This is abnormal pattern." And they studied them. They found out, man, they are welling the death of the young ones. And it was so profound that it made see where or I think it was it made them change how they treated those younger. Well, they shut down. They wrote new policies, and it made them change how they treated them, the younger ones, so that they wouldn't die because they found, they saw their pattern of those female whales get together giving out these cries, and they were moved by this. <coughs> and when I heard the story, the person that told the story was on the radio station. He said, now, if they are moved by the cry of whales mm. because right. they're young guys. Why ain't they, Why ain't they, they moved by the cry of mothers mm. all over America in the hoods of their young men dying? Again, showing they have more compassion for animals than they do for their fellow human beings. That was that was deep though when I when I heard that story. Mm. Yes, sir, God. Barcelona. 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 Uh, first of all, I thought I had to give my honor and praise to the Holy One of Israel. His name alone is Yahweh. If I say hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Oh man, going through some rough times. Just, just bless the Yahweh, hold me, keep me firm. Uh, one of the things I want to ask, all right. Oh, first I want to give Yahweh thanks and glory for everyone here, everyone on the internet, listening, everybody who still got the Ruach in to get him in honor, glory, praise this day and any day he grants and so forth. <coughs> but my question, um, I had a question about. When Yahweh cursed is it a time that if he holds a curse on you forever, as was spoken of, I think it was in First Kings five, five, I remember. Uh, he cursed someone forever, that line is the people. And I just wanted to find out if they still able to receive a blessing after a curse rather than after a sin. And they said we are sin to turn from our way from a sin or abomination. So I want to curse on them. Yeah, I know it may last forever because he turned the whole kind of way. But I wonder if he's still able to get a blessing and he still curse and he put on your generation. Hallelujah. 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 Anyone else? Your sister wants to make one back there? No. The box is wrong. The box is wrong. Hallelujah. First and foremost, let you give all thanks and praise to the Most High Yah. Saying hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to thank y'all this day for waking me up, waking up my family, watching over them and keeping them safe. I want to send my condolences to my brother and the Taylor family. But along with his mom, you were the one who had hands and kept raising me up to where I am today. When we give thanks and praise and condolences to him and his family for her ongoing celebration. I just want to thank Yahweh for all that he does in my life and around my life. And just say hallelujah. Hallelujah. There we go. <laughs> you can go out here in that voice. Give all praise, honor, and glory to the Holy One of Israel. Thank you, Mother Yahweh, by saying hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I just want to praise Yahweh for his mercy uh, endures forever. And I praise Yahweh that he uh, 
keeps a hedge around us with protection and his mercy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Any any other questions? Questions here come. Any other questions? I gotta do, do something about this book or pages that just I touch them and they just fall apart. <laughs> but I don't want to order another. My line is really blank. I broke this in. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Last week, my son by the name of John Seraphine talked about the attack. Hallelujah. A couple of months, and my wife by the name of John Seraphine was like, you ready for that? Um, Y'all heard about the tornado happening in Davis? Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, then, um, we got to get down for the thing like that, sir. David got to get the party. But also the thing they said they called a um, tornado on one of the interstate then I seventy five. It you know a clear picture, but it, it shows that you know, the formation of, of the of the um, tornado. Um and also oh I got a question by the uh I think it's by on Queensland, by Washington D.C. Oh, yeah, when we went down to Carlton, I did about, you know, being working all the time, I'd be preparing myself to wash up. And my way would be out like two hours to wash up and be on Queen. And I think about my practice. <laughs> I pride that because during the winter time, the sun goes down five, six o'clock. I'll be sitting there about nine to ten. Uh, at my work, we've been slow. We've been so slow. I get out work at seven, seven, okay, seven or seven thirty. At least an hour or so to prepare for. Uh, Wash up, man. You know, we only just got a couple months before we decided to get back to But uh, I pray y'all that last day I had a chance to prepare myself to be um, clean with the project. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. My mind was running racing. So, I almost uh -huh. forgot to mention, hallelujah. I want to give thanks and praise to Mosiah. Yesterday, my daughter Antoinette graduated. So, 17, she's done with high school. She earned three college credits already, and she's looking to go to cosmetology. So, I'm thankful to give thanks and praise to y'all for her, and I'm thankful for that. I'm just really, you know, Yahweh does a lot. And I'm thankful that he let me see certain things and that he highlights certain things to me when I'm really paying attention to what I'm supposed to be paying attention to. Like I know if I find myself, if I don't read, if I don't read no word, or if I don't be mindful of, of him, he'll put something in my way. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I mean? He puts that in my way where you have to acknowledge it like, wait a minute. Oh, hallelujah. I praise y'all. Thank you, y'all. You know, so you have to acknowledge those things when you see them. And, and they help me to understand, you know, if you ain't going to stand and glorify y'all, who is? You know, why, why, why waste your time? Why even... Why pretend? Why fake the funk? You know what I'm saying? Y'all say he's going to get his glory regardless. 
regardless, he's going to get his glory. And he's going to get it through you. One way or another, he is going to put you down and he's going to get magnification. Or you're going to build him up and he's going to get magnification. So I'm thankful that Yah is giving me a voice that's loud. I'm thankful that Yah has made me voices and have put me through certain challenges and certain situations <laughs> that make me respect and understand who he is. And I'm, I'm extremely thankful. All this is extended from riding with my friend. My, my friend Dustin, he is, he is a Gentile, but that's my brother, and I, and I truly love that man. And the things that he shared with me about his life, and y'all have seen the white dude came up here on the bike, missing all his teeth, looking like he strung out on everything under the sun. That same brother, the same one, the same one. Them been paralyzed, crawling on the ground, living on the bridge up the street up here. For over two years, he lived underneath this bridge up the street. He done got himself cleaned up. You know, he's staying in the Joker house now. And he done got his life together. He ain't on drugs no more. He don't even smoke cigarettes no more. And he's in the process of weaning himself off the I'm so thankful that y'all use me in this man's life. I've been in part of this man's life for over 15, almost 20 years now. And every ever since I've known him, he's been a drug addict. Ever since I've known him, he's been strung out. He's been about his business. He's what, he, what we call a functioning addict, a term that we use for someone that can go to work, smoke, crack, heroin, whatever they want to do, and still function in society. And then eventually they, it'll catch up to him. And this brother done went through all this. And I'm thankful that y'all used me that he can confide his testimony to me. He can say things and, and speak to me about influences that he said I had on his life. Just in my manner on how I was being or because at the moment I was serving God and I was trying to learn about God and I start implementing God into my life. And I never meant this brother to go to war about him, about Christ of the New Testament and the Most High. Now this brother, he, he praised Yahweh. He is Gentile, but he praised Yahweh. And he's trying to still learn how to praise God. And God say, the Gentiles are going to grab hold of your coattail. If you're a servant of his and you're trying to serve God, you're going to help many people. But you can't help people get to Yah if you refuse to step into what Yah called you here for. He pulled you out of the world and brought you into his sanctuary, brought you into the light of him. And when he brought you into the light of him, he, he, he got a mission for you to do. But if you don't never accept into your mission, if you don't never accept that he is your only one and that he is your strength, then he can't fully give you what, what is deserved of you to have. Your blessings is sitting right there waiting on you, but you refuse to walk towards them and grab them. And I'm thankful that Yah is opening my eyes so I can see the things that I need to see to start working toward my responsibility, to start working toward what he set up for me to do. So I praise Yah. So hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Okay, thank you, my love. Truly bless your soul, Lord. Yes, and as you've heard it said in the scriptures, the Most High said, All souls are mine. That's what the prayer said. Oh, God. 
И все равно он стал она. When you say all souls, all souls. What does that encompass? All, everything. We say you created the heaven and earth to see and all that is in the world. It encompasses all things. Hallelujah. Everybody. We and the right. Poor and the rich, young and the old, black and the white, everybody, everybody belong to him. The cursed soul and the blessed soul, it belong to Yah. And this is just a more profound thing. My brother has to say when someone is cursed of Yah, mm. I want to make sure I have it right. Does it remain with him forever? If I'm not saying it right, come back and and, and anyway, does it remain on him forever or do they have a chance of it being alleviated? That's what I heard, but maybe I heard it incorrectly. Yeah. Yeah, I probably said it in that tense. Excuse me. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, Yahweh had placed a curse on someone. Mm -hmm. I want to say it was in First Kings 5. I might have done 12. You heard it? Yeah. But he said his generation yes. was cursed through the whole. So, but do they still have a chance to still get some blessings? Or is it just they he said, Oh, yes. So he told him, he said, curse is. Good hazy. Right. I mean, well, this, will, will, this will start with you. Right. And he said, and this curse should not, it should be upon your descendants. Let's go there. Let's go there. Second key. Yes, sir. Let's read. Let's start the first verse. Chapter 5. 2 Kings chapter 5. 2 Kings chapter 5. Mm -hmm. Starting at verse 1. Mm -hmm. So we can get the full gist of what's going on. Understand. Second King, chapter 5, verse 1, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable because by him Yahweh had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor. But he was a leper. See, so the leper was not only of all people, this term leper not only was used amongst the described situation among all people, but this man was a leper. Now, a leper is somebody that's biblically, whether they of the curse or whether they of the plague. And it don't tell us if he was of the plague or if he had the curse. But I was surmised he probably had the plague. But with that plague, it's flesh. If you understand what leprosy is, 
See, they don't teach you and show you in the movies because they don't want you to know the truth. So when they show you somebody in the movie that got leprosy, they show you a man with bumps and boils and all scarred up and stuff like that. But which is some of the factors, but they don't show you that the emphasis, the scariest part of the leprosy that he had, plague or curse, is that he had no pigmentation. That he's been turned, as we would describe and did describe in our tongues, to the best description, he's been turned white as snow. Now, there's a reason why they wouldn't want you to know that. Then you know that not only was Israel black, the Syrians were black. Yeah. That's why I say he had lepers. It wasn't white because <laughs> he suffered from the same thing any other black man suffered from. So the Syrians were black. And while I watched the video this past week, dude was trying to refute whether Israel was black. You can't refute that no more. That's, that really ain't even no argument no more. Not with people that got understand. Right, gotcha. You can't even refute that. And we know that whole region was wow. black. Verse 2. The Syrians have gone out by company and have brought away captives out of the land of Israel a little maid, and she waited on Naaman's wife. So then when they went out and conquered, made war, they brought back as a spoil war, they brought back a young maid. And this young maiden went into the house of Naaman and began to be Naaman's wife's attendant. Mm -hmm. And she said unto her mistress, With Elohim, my love, if El with Elohim, my master, were with, were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. She said, Oh. The young girl said, oh, I wish. Now, look, pick, let's pick these things up. She wasn't in his house. She's a captive. She's a captive. In the land of Syria. Now, look at, but look at how she's conducting herself. And they're talking about what the people are. See, they, as I thought about some things this morning. Sidebar. Keep your hand right here. The only constant in life is change. The only constant in life, the only thing that stays the same in life is that things don't change. See, we live thinking that things don't change. But no, the only constant is that things do change. That is called your circumstances. So in other words, your circumstances changes. That's called life. Whether voluntary, meaning by your things you do, or involuntary. But your circumstances change. But the change of your circumstance cannot effectually change you or should not effectually change you if you are good. When the circumstances do, that's what they call a person being jaded. See, that's what you've seen in the house of Israel. Circumstances change. Yeah. It changed. And with some people that were foundation may have been a little shaky. The circumstances changed. It changed them. Yeah. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. See, Joe's circumstances changed. His life totally flipped. But it did not change him. 
although he questioned, it did not change him. That's why I said, why I said do you retain your integrity? Are you you still the same? You're gonna still be the same man <coughs> that you was when you had everything? And he said, Of course I am. Well, I should not. Of course I should still feel the same way about my Elohim. Why shouldn't I? If I die, I should go out feeling the same way about it. Just because my circumstance has changed, I've lost things. They're my circumstances. But my circumstances don't define who I am. Neither can I allow it to. And why some of them people up there tornado that ripped their homes up. But for some of them up there, it has not changed who they are. That's the preventive thought you hear and heard on TV. Then we can build another. I can go get it. I can go get another car. Eventually, we're going to build this place back up and it's going to look like a bustling city all over again. But I'm still the same person before this catastrophe. But some won't be. The circumstances will break them. But know that life throws curve, it changes. That's the only constant of life. That it does change. I won't say the only the only other constant in life is that Yahweh is always in the mix. But the young so the young lady was able to know that the creator was with her, just as he was with her when she was at home in her own land. He was with her when the circumstances changed, and she found herself in the company of the Syrians. She did not leave, and that's what I said. She did not leave Yahweh when she left the land. Just as I that's why I pointed out last week when I brought that and we discovered that about our people. We did not leave Yahweh just because we left the land. We had what in the Greek tongue, in the Greek tongue, we had what they call synagogues all over the land. In our tongue, we call them Moada, meeting places. We had them all over the land. And geographically and historically, and now we've proven it, we took the same meeting places with us when we went outside the land. And that's why you can find them in territories of Greece. You can find them in the territories of Rome. You can find them in, in the civilization of Babylon. Because when we left the homeland, we took them with us. We took that spirit with us. And wherever we went, we built the same facilities wherever we went to. Because we took that spirit with us. Although our circumstances changed. It did not change whom we was and what we were supposed to be doing. Why well, I say I can send him away to college. Nothing should change. That's right. Not if this is who you are. All right. Nothing should change. Hey, brother, let's go do the sound. Hallelujah. If there's a Knesset in it, I go and I drive down here to this Knesset. Hallelujah. I tune in to Knesset back home. But nothing should change. Because the circumstances have changed. And nothing about her changed. And that's why she said to even them that that took her into captivity. She said, oh, that we were back in Samaria All right. with a man of Elohim. Because right. you know what he would do for your husband? Go ahead. He would heal him. All right. <laughs> we know how to heal this. Hallelujah. We've been dealing mm -hmm. with this for years. All right. We know this condition. And we know how to heal 
the divine creator of heaven and the earth. See, he gave us in his law and his doctrine and his statutes and his order. He gave us the ability to be able to heal this. So I wish there was a man of Elohim in your midst. He would heal your husband. Too bad we here <laughs> in Syria. Right. Where there is none. Now, now, here go that heart for the, that woman. Remember we talked about her? Yeah. That love her? Love. Now, what she start thinking? Mm. Somebody can heal my love? Somebody can heal me? Where are you at? They can heal me? <laughs> now, I can't go to Syria. Tell me more, baby. And one went in and told his master, so, saying. So there was one that heard the conversation. And he ran and told his master. You know what they did in the time now? Thus and thus said the man that is of the land of Israel. That young girl just started talking about stuff and, and, and started talking about things and talking about how I can heal you. And my brother was saying, see, this is testifying. This is testifying. It ain't all just, oh, praise. This is testifying. Oh, yeah. Back home, we used to this. We used to treat it with that. We used to treat it with this. She's testifying to the glory of Yahweh oh, yeah. in captivity. Oh, yeah. And the people wanted, well, ain't got nothing like that here. <laughs> We've done it. Have you not testified? Yeah. Have you not said, man, we, man, we get a little, we grab a little herbs, we grab a little this, because the Almighty blessed us. We do this, we do that. That's what my brother talking about with his friend. Because all souls belong to Yah. Uh, yeah. This gets bigger than just you, <laughs> than just our petty little things yeah. and things they throw. There's another, because there's an interesting video my brother even sent me this week, and I watched it. Oh, God, yes, sir. There's a brother. Ooh. That is powerful. Ooh. It's powerful. There's a brother, and he starts off with the video. He said, man, I got two uniforms. He said, I got a cop uniform. Let me hang it up. And he said, I got another uniform. And he goes to the story of, and the second uniform he hangs up is the imperial robe of the Ku Klux Klan. He said, now I'm going to tell you the story how I came across both of these items. Because you wouldn't think, especially the second one, you wouldn't think that I would have this. This man, this brother, See, this is the power. <laughs> this is the power. Oh, God. When you're not executed right. Because I was telling my son last night, I said, you got to stop thinking physically. Right. And when we talk about security things, because of shooting and whatever, you got to stop thinking everything physical, and you got to start thinking from here and here. Oh, God. And you won't even have to go there. That's right. When the Almighty yeah. said it's divine in you, you won't even have to go to that level. We don't utilize higher thought, higher principle. Oh, yeah. But this man, especially, struck up a relationship with the imperial, with an imperial. I think he was Grand Wizard National League of the Ku Klux Klan to the point where the man, the brother, get this now, get this now, <laughs> like oxymoron. the brother, because he played in the band, the Grand Wizard would come and watch him band play, and the brother had free reign to go to every Ku Klux Klan meeting and gathering that they do and walk in the midst of them and not feel threatened. Nobody better lay a hand on him. 
Right. Matter of fact, he even told his oh. fellow brothers. He said, I'll follow that man to hell and back before I follow some of y'all. Right in the midst of a clan rally. Yes. <laughs> in the midst of a clan rally. They sell, they they sharing soda pop, soda pops and cans of pops. They bring he take off his robe, he come down and he grab them and they share pops and drink it in there. And they sharing pop right in the midst of, and ain't nobody, man, thinking about laying a hand on this. This man is walking through clansmen, unabated, no fear, no constraint. He walking through like he had a family reunion, and nobody is, they smiling, they, they accepting him. Now they just done burned the cross and all that kind of stuff that intimidates people. And this man is moving freely through that. Y'all gotta see this video. I'm telling you. <laughs> see? The man sitting see. there and he said, but I, I ain't changed. Can't change because the plan is interesting to me. At the end of the video, the brother and the relationship becomes so powerful. How he got the man's robe is because eventually the clan and walked away. That grand wizard walked away and disavowed the clan. Yeah. And you're talking about a national leader Hallelujah. of the clan. He made him give it up. And he didn't do so with insults. He didn't do so with sentiments. He didn't do so with emotion. He did so with the ability, as he said, to understand. Once I understood this man, then I knew how to combat. When I understood his mindset and his spirit, then I knew what I was dealing with. Oh, yeah. And this man began to come to his house and sit in his den. Because even CNN said, well, we want, we would like to talk to him. He said, I'll give you one better than that. He said, I'll set the meeting up in my house. And the people see, they were like, huh? <laughs> you know that? They didn't believe him. But yes, he called him. The man drove two hours, and at this time, he, he had struck up a relationship where he didn't even bring his bodyguard. The first few times he met, he had his bodyguard with him. At this time, they became such good friends, he drove two and didn't even bring his bodyguard with him. That's a friend. <laughs> That's called respect for one another right there. He changed me. Changed me. Love and He changed me. See, that's why I'm the kind of speaking. I, I can understand the hatred and well, I can understand the angst because of everything that's going on. But I, I'm the kind of speaker, I'm the kind of person, I'm the kind of Israel who believes, even with all my flaws, that the Almighty is with me. Hallelujah. So I don't have to be the kind of Israelite to go out and hurl insults at people. All right. I'm the kind of believe that the Almighty is with him. That if I be with him, wherever I go, I can have success. Oh, and I can change, as the saying say, if you can't change the people around you, you yeah, change the people. Around. But I believe I can change some of the people around me or change the people that's around me. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Just as this man believed he could change, and he did change. Y'all got to get my brother to send y'all that video if y'all didn't get it and watch it. That's the power of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. That happened with an uh, uh, older uh, a sister, a civil rights um, leader, and that they made that video a movie about, movie. Movie. Yes. Movie about that sister. Yes, yes, yes. They did. yes. It just they just came out. It probably as in, yes, yeah, yeah. It's amazing how none of that yeah. stuff is really publicized no. and brought forth, man. Until all no. this time now. You know, you know, they set up a lot of things that really trick people and tell us some old bull. This is a male operation. Because yeah. this takes you to a whole, this breaks the game. This breaks the facade of the world that you're living in. This breaks that. That's why the Almighty never had his servant be scared to sit down 
and engage in dialect with somebody, no matter what they believe. Because when you have the truth Hallelujah. and can articulate the truth Hallelujah. and leave out all the other muddy waters and just give them that clear cup of water to satisfy the thirst, there's nothing left. All right. As I said about the young man trying to dispute in Israel, there's nothing he has. The Almighty is bringing out truth. Geographically, historically, scripturally, and even by the mouth of the so-called people that call themselves Jews, they, in certain segments of the population, are starting to confess now, we not. Just as the Almighty said, they're going to say, our fathers have inherited lies, vanity, and things that cannot profit. they starting to make videos. they starting to tell, we not. We not. We're not. So they have nothing. That's why it's gonna, that's why it's gonna get rough. Have nothing. All this, truth. this is a battle of truth and falsehood, not black and simply white. This is a battle of the righteous and the wicked. Hallelujah. That's what this is. Hallelujah. But then the world blanketed, the world is blanketed with what's real by a force field of illusion and deceit that most people are walking around and they see that force field of illusion and deceit therefore they can't deal and get beyond and get into that world that's of truth and righteousness wickedness falsehood they start self-destructing in their world around them change But the young lady mm. painted such a pretty picture that it moved her oppressors. See, she had power over her oppressor. When you tap back into who you are, you do not, you have not given up power. You have assumed power. Oh, yeah. Yeah, things cannot be defined to you now. You define things. So things were not defined to her. Yeah, I'm away from her. Yeah, I'm in cap, but it does not de I'm going to define it. And she did so by holding on to whom she was oh, to the wow. point where her captives heard all the glory of who's and what she was and said, man, wait a minute. Do we have nothing like that here? My brother talking about either we rep or we don't because you're going to get it wrong. The only reason why we don't is because there's a sense of hesitation because maybe we haven't boned up on what we should be boned up in. Mm -hmm. We haven't blessed y'all oh my soul. All right. He's not there. Go ahead, all right. We don't make him have a home in our soul, in our spirit. Right. This is the only time we have a home on the Sabbath day Would for you? a few minutes. Right. And most of us even clock out halfway through this. Yes, His sir. spirit is not indelibly there. All right, go ahead, all right. Teach that. And it don't go leave ahead. with you. If you receive it, it don't go out with you. Oh, so when you God. get back in the world, you have not a spirit full that make you motivated to go out and shine the light of Yah. A spirit that make you motivated to wear your friends. Right, a spirit that make you motivated to wear something to bring attention to you. A spirit that clothes you with righteousness. All right, oh God. Even in your failures, you're going to be clothed with righteousness. I fail, I fail, but oh, your body is right. And I'll even bend to his judgment and his justice. Because yes, he's right. Because people will look at me like, wow, that's deep. Then you take the power of them having something to hold against, you take that away from them. Oh, yeah. When you can exercise the fact to put their righteousness of Yah even before you, oh, you take the power away from them. Oh, did you do that? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Own it. I'm wrong. 
Y'all gonna pay the price. I gotta pay the price to the most high. Oh yeah. Now they have no power to hold nothing over you. Oh, but as long as you try to hold it and <laughs> finagle and hide right. and, and, and divert, they got power. All right. You're always gonna fear. Look at what they know. Ooh, Ooh. how they, they gonna use that? that. That's part of the question. You're cursed because you want to be cursed. All and right. it's going to stay with you for however long you want it to stay with you. Oh, yeah. You know the case. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm glad you just said what you said. Because last week I had an incident <clears throat> with my neighbor who I was accused have done this thing. And I, I just knew it was her. And so this certain thing occurred last week. I'm like, I know it was her. So, you know. Um, let me react in this way. And the next day, I found out that she she didn't do this particular thing this one time. And so I was like, wow, that was a house. I was completely, she been doing this for almost three years. So I was very shocked that this was not her. Right. And so because this was not her, what I did was I had to put Yahweh's righteousness forth first. And I said, when I see her door open, or when I just see her, I need to apologize to her, you know, for, for doing this thing that I did. And so when I had saw her, I apologized to her. You know, I, I actually saw her yesterday for the first Very time. Sweet. And, uh, you know, I'm glad I did because she's like, oh. but I had saw her, and I said, well, you know, we've been dealing with this certain issue because it's always been you. I just assumed that it was you. And it wasn't even you, so I'm going to apologize to you for that. And the way she looked at me was that this, dang, you know, you know, because certain people do want to hold certain uh -huh. things so they can say this, or they can say that, or they can whatever, right? And so I just praise God, because I say it to myself when I come down, that when I do see her, I'm going to apologize, because I'm, you know, I'm going to apologize for my wrongdoings. And so when I apologize, I just thank God that he to allow me to do that and to put his truth first, you know, and, and, and forgive my feelings. You know, I was wrong. You know, I, 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 if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. You know, I ain't gonna try to cover over my wrong. I'm gonna just try to make it right. And so I definitely want to praise y'all, get him the glory for allowing me, for putting it on my heart to want to, you know, right my wrong and apologize to the sister. You know, and we were able to come to an understanding. You know, and that was just a beast thing because we are neighbors. Yes. You know? And so, um, I just had to, you know, you know, I did want to say that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Second Kings chapter 5, verse 5. Hallelujah. Right there. And the king of Syria said, Go to. Go to. Go. And I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. Mm -hmm. And he departed and took with him 10 talents of silver. And six thousand pieces of gold, and ten chains, and ten changes of raiment. Now this is a, a king's fortune. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, "He brought it to the king of Israel, saying, Now when this letter is come unto thee, behold, I have therewith sent Naaman, my servant, to thee." That thou mayest recover him from his leprosy. See, they didn't even they didn't even know. He wrote the king because with the mind of a Syrian, he didn't understand what the young lady was talking about. What kind of man in Israel could have such power what? to be able to heal a man of leprosy? Well, because the only man in my realm that have power like that that we regard is the king. The king. So therefore, she must be talking about the king. So I'm going to write this letter and send all this substance to the king of Israel so that he can heal my servant Naaman. He read. And it came to pass, when the king of Israel had read the letter, that he read his clothes and said, Am I Elohim to keep and to make a lie? To this man do send unto me to recover a man of his leprosy. And the king removed when he got the letter. He said, what is this? What is this? They're trying to get me killed. <laughs> He's trying to start a war. 
And he ran and pulled his clothes off because he knew, you know, the Syrian the the that they're powerful. He said, this dude is trying to start something. He's picking a fight. He done wrote me talking about healing somebody. And Am I Elohim that I heal people and kill people? Remember what? Just, oh, man. <laughs> so he's shaking by the left. He said, wherefore consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh a quarrel against me. He ain't trying to start war. <laughs> he wanted an occasion to start war. Go ahead. And it was so. When Elisha, the man of Elohim, had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come now to me, and he shall now, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. No, son, why you tear your clothes on? Why you do that to yourself? <laughs> he wasn't talking about you in the first place, don't you? Don't you know who we're talking about? You get scared for all. <laughs> he said, tell the man to come. You want to tan up your nice robes and stuff? He wasn't even talking about you. He your problem. He was talking about me. Let him come so that we can show him there is a man of Elohim in Israel. There is someone of the divine in Israel. Let him come. And so, let him come to me. So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. Not a big palace. Not a great big old place. At least he didn't have that. He had a nice little prophet's home. And that's where he came to. Go ahead. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times. Go down to Jordan, the Jordan River. Go there, wash in it seven times. And thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. And the flesh shall come unto you, and you shall be clean, brother Ben. He was told him, wash in this Jordan River. Do it seven times so your flesh can be restored to you. And I'm here to tell you today that same Jordan River still had them healing properties in it to this very day. Oh, yeah. They still had them same properties in it to this very day. That's why people fly and make pilgrimage over there to get baptized still. And it ain't even got nothing to do with Christ. They go over there to get baptized in the Jordan River. And the Jordan River is some of the most powerful, one of the most powerful rivers in the world is proven even right now even right now and you go to israel the jordan it will be a center of attention even right now so much that like the wicked they get little vials of glass of water and tell you they'll send it to you and they'll tell you this came out the Jordan River. Mm. Now, it probably came out of Gihon Spring, uh, Springs or somewhere else around. <laughs> yeah, but that tell you, that's not like, this came out of the Jordan River. And people pay a pretty penny for a little bit of vial of water that they think came out of the Jordan River. They put about 20, I think it was at least 20 sumos, wrestlers. They took them over there and put them in the Jordan River. Big, heavy. 300 pound men, 400 pound men, and they just floated like balls on top of the river. Didn't even have to, not pounding and kicking nothing to stay afloat. They just floated. <laughs> That's what the prophet told him. Just going seven times, take a bath in the Jordan River. Go ahead. But Naaman was wrong and went away. We got mad. Yes. And said, Behold, I thought he would surely come out to me mm -hmm. and stand mm -hmm. and call on the name of Yahweh his Elohim and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. Now let's start right there. 
Because see, that's, a, that's the instinct of all men. That's the instinct even of us in Israel. That's the instinct of even us to sit here. That's the instinct of me. We are always looking for something great to affect change in our life. Oh man, I wish you, if this, um, and you want something real great and real big to happen. Yeah. I wish my, my money get back, my search that get back, and you want something great and big to happen. Really you waiting not. on somebody to do just like he was waiting on somebody to do. Come out and give you a, a dog and pony show. And he told him something, and he didn't tell him to affect change in his life. He didn't do no dog and pony. He told him to do something <laughs> real simple. simple. Very simple. Go wash in the door. It's the simplest. It's the simplest changes. Yeah. That you make on a daily basis. Oh, it's the God. simplest things you institute on a daily basis that make the difference in your life. Oh, gosh. See, it don't, but it don't seem much. If I tell you right now, every week, put away five dollars. I'll tell you that right now. Every week, put away five dollars. Most of you, friend company included, you're going to walk with that Five dollars. What's that? What's that? Because it's so simple. It don't sound like a lot. Now, if I told you to put away a thousand dollars, you'd be like, ooh, yeah. But because five dollars. But in weeks' time, in weeks' time, when you look, and not even in weeks' time, when you project ahead. And you say five dollars times four weeks, that's twenty dollars. Twenty dollars times three months, that's sixty dollars. Take that three months, multiply it by four. You see the growth of it. It's the little changes. It'll be more than what you have not doing. Little change. It might be something that happens in three months, and you say, Man, I need $60. Yeah. And then you say, Oh, wait, wait a minute. Let me look at my account. And sitting there is $60. And you say, Hot diggity dog. That's right. <laughs> because you did the little things. But we are always waiting on the Big thing. Yep. Just like here. When he told him to do something simple, he got upset. He got upset. See, knowledge, wisdom, it often comes in the skies of being simple. Uh, we got That's but we're waiting on something Grand. big. A magician's trick. He said, I thought he was going to strike his hand over this place. Like him. Oh, we get blinded. And when we come to, I'll be recovered of my left. Then he said, Are not Abana, far, far, far. The rivers of Damascus, my homeland, are they not better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in rage. He was upset. Like we get. Yeah. When we when somebody tells us something simple to do, we get upset. Huh? Blow out the hand. Ah, oh, And his servants came near and spoke to him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee to do something great, would you not have done it? They said, Well, if he told you to do something great, would you not have done it? And the answer is yes, because that's what he was waiting on. They said, Well, if you believe him and believe his word, and he told you to do something great, then why won't you believe his word 
and do what he tells you to do. That's so simple. Because as simple as it is, it is something great. If you believe him to have the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, as he say he has, how much rather than when he said unto me, wash and be clean. So he went down and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the saying of the man of Elohim, and his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child. And he was clean. Hallelujah. And he returned to the man of Elohim. He and all his company. And came and stood before the man of Elohim. And said behold. Now I know. That there is no Elohim. In all the earth. But Israel. Hallelujah. Now therefore I pray thee. Take a blessing. Of thy servant. But he said, the man of Elohim said, as y'all living before whom I stand, I will receive nothing. And he urged him to take it. But the man of Elohim, at least he refused. See, sometimes there's not a price for what you do for somebody. Not. not especially when you're trying to get the glory to the most high. All right. You'll be robbing him. You know, sometimes you, you you do what you do to glorify the Almighty, and you don't worry about the price at that point. I need to come here and speak. All right. How much are we going to pay you? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I know years ago I did it. I did it when I did my first year, I did it, and I did it. To, I was asked, but I did it to glorify the Almighty. My sister said, how much, how much are you? I said, oh, I said, don't worry about that. I said, we, we just don't do this. They ain't the rest and grow up out here. We ain't worry about all that. And that's my practice, period. Because I know at funerals, I know at weddings, I have, I have people that have never heard of the Almighty. And my first goal is to, why they there is to glorify the Almighty. That's my goal. I worry about the other lady. And showing up. Case in point, when it came time for that, I got a nice little something in the mail. When I needed it. And I said, Where are you? But that wasn't on my mind at the time. My only thing was laying that person that sold the rest and glorifying the Almighty. And all Saturday, it was such a ruckus. All Saturday, brother, the brothers and sisters had attended. The they were coming back. I didn't go in the crowd. They were coming out of class. Man, I was mad. That's all I talked about all Saturday. Talked about it so much. Brother Lisa came back. He said, man, he called me. He said, man, what did you do? I said, what? He said, man, that's all I'm hearing about. What did you say? I said, I don't know. He said, tell me what you said. So I, I said, bro, I can't tell. I don't know. I didn't record it right. I, I don't know. And man, people just going crazy on me. So sometimes you don't see that's the thing. Again, and these the hidden things. What's hid? As you see, people sometimes they say they're doing things to glorify the Almighty, but they're doing it for a different reward. They're doing it for a different reward. They're looking for a reward. I heard some teaching. I don't do such and such, except they. All right. All right. But all the urging, he told him, I've done what I need, what I wanted to do. 
And what I want them to do is understand that Elohim rules through the kingdom of man. And I want to glorify him. So I'm not concerned right now with pain. That's key in this story. That you understand that. Mindset is key. You understand that. That his sole goal was to glorify the most high. Hallelujah. But Naaman says, Shall that not then, I pray thee, be given to thy servant two mules of burden of the earth? For thy servant will henceforth offer neither burnt offering nor sacrifice unto idols, but only unto Yahweh only. See how that is more than silver and gold, what he has done to Naaman. He has changed, like we said earlier about that brother, with the, he has changed this man's life. He has affected this person's soul. And there's no price you can put on that. He has won a soul Hallelujah. to the creator, which is the hardest thing to do. You have to be wise. Not only wise, but you have to have the almighty on your It is a hard endeavor to win souls. To the Almighty. Even Israelite souls. I'm talking them to know Yah. There is a cunning, there is a wisdom, there is a knowledge, there is an understanding that only is given from the Almighty Yah to effectuate a change in somebody's soul. You can speak for five years and never get somebody to see the Almighty. That's why he told the prophet. He said, don't fret. Them hard people. Them stem that people. Them rebellious people. Because I've shown them plenty of things without sending them to anybody, and they still ain't listening. All right. How much more should they listen to you? You're not a failure because they don't listen to you, because they don't pack your classes or your assembly. You're not a failure. He said, as long as you speak the truth. He said, because I'm then going to handle everything else after that. But he actually not only healed this man of his leprosy, he has changed the very Makeup of this man changed his theology. Oh, yeah. And that is powerful. Yeah. Again, I go back to one of my favorite, I'm harking to one of my favorite movies where he tells him, where he tells him, he said, You you got this sword? He said, put that sword in. And if, I'm paraphrasing, he said, put that sword down. And he's surrounded by all the guys, surrounded by all his followers. And he looked up at the mountains. He said, he said, let me show you. And he said, come to me, child. Come to me. And the young lady jumps off the mountain to her death. Jumps. No fear, no trouble. Just leaps, thinking she can get to him. And he turned around and he said, that. His power. What you gonna do with that? I have the effect on people's minds. Therefore, I have their bodies. All right. That little puny thing you got in your hand, that ain't nothing. Because all these people right here, they'll get their life. You won't get to me. As I pay back, they'll close it and they'll give their life to make sure you don't get. And I'm assured you ain't going to go through all of this. So I ain't got to even stand here. And that's why I'm standing so close to you because I ain't even got to stand here and fear your little sword. Because the power that I live is among you. All right? That's power. That's divine. That's what do you mean when you say, I have said, you are Elohim. 
power of the gospel. The power to even influence everything around you. But if you don't walk in the divine, you can't be divine. All right. Go ahead. The power of the spirit. It's a magnificent thing. Gary going to fight. Man, make him feel that I'm here. I ain't through one blow. Make him feel that I'm here. And I stand over there in the corner, he stand over in the other corner. Make him feel that I'm make him feel like he already done fought two rounds. How you can do that? Power of the spirit. Um, There's a certain spirit you give off. Uh oh, this is going around the end too deep. <laughs> That's right. See, I was telling my son the other night, we all have them. Let me confess to you. See, we, that's why the Almighty said there's a certain point that we go to. We reach for righteousness, but he said there's a certain point that we go to where everything won't be reclaimed till we get out of this land and get back home because of certain things. We set myself up for it. The fullness of Yah. Because as I told my son, it's spiritual. Things are spiritual. All right. But there's things interfering with, with the spirits of men and women. Yes. Namely, do when you walk and you have these things on your head, on your ear. You're looking at them. You're FaceTiming. You're doing all this. Like I told him, when people go on retreats, when rich people go to find themselves to the places of like Indonesia and countries, they don't go to places where they're so-called advanced civilization. They go to places where all that stuff is left behind. Their phone is left behind. Them computers and laptops are left behind. All that stuff is left behind. And they go to places where their feet touch the earth. Yeah. yeah. Where their feet touch the earth. And their head is to the heavens. Because that's why Moses said, I call the two greatest witnesses, heaven and earth, to record against you. Because that's what man is. Man is heaven and man is earth. He's taken from the earth and he came and the breath of heaven, the wind, the ruach was blew into him. They become a living spirit, a living soul. So what's the two greatest things he should return to when trying to find himself? Heaven and earth. Heaven and earth. Hallelujah. Them technological things interfere with them because they also give off waves to yeah. interfere. Yes, they do. See, when I took my children to the doctor, they said, man, two hours of FaceTime. That's what any good doctor tell the kids. Today. Two hours of FaceTime. That means any, that means maximum. Well, during the day, it, it, it's a lot, but it's not going to spread out through the course of a day. But it should not go beyond that. You got a long day. That's 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 it's a it's, lot it's a lot of time, but it's not a lot of time considering the day. When you can, and especially if you're using it constructively. Two hours, you get a lot done. If you're using it constructively, yeah. A max of two hours using it constructively. You can build a city. But see, young kids are not doing it. Young kids and you are spending all the day in front of their Xboxes, PSPs, or whatever they have, learning how to shoot up things, shoot up people, mind being disoriented. Mind getting disoriented. That's why they did a study and they found out the kids that are. 
it's a they have classified it now as a mental disorder mm. when kids are playing games too long. They have now classified that as a mental disorder. A mental disorder. I heard that just this week. They classified it when they sit amongst their computers and their screen. They have classified that as a mental disorder. Mm. Now, this ain't nothing that our parents and our forefathers didn't know. Because when I was a young boy growing up, my mother, my mother, as she often tell me with my kids, and I had to listen to it, that one of her thing with me. She said, you know what? You let them watch too much TV. She said, when you growing up, you know we didn't, I didn't let you watch that much TV. You got set time, you watch TV. Then you get your tail out front, in front of that TV and you do things. And she's absolutely right. I didn't sit there and watch TV all day long. Didn't have TV, my own TV in my room. I see, I, I had my pair and there were certain shows that I watched. And then when those shows were done, that was it. If I watch anything else, I watch things that they would watch. And I didn't want to watch those things. And some of those things I wasn't supposed to be watching. That's why they call it prime time. When prime time hit, I knew prime time meant end time for me. Bedtime. That's what prime time meant for me. Prime time meant bedtime. That's right. That's right. I'll be sitting at the top of the steps trying to hear the TV. What the way not be out that bed? Yeah, boy, she creeped through there. She creeped through there having to hit. What I tell you? <laughs> See, they don't know how lean. Uh -huh. I was in bed. I was in bed. Eight o'clock. Yeah. Look at that. He like, what? Yeah. He's like, huh? Yeah. It's still light outside. That's right. Eight o'clock. Bedtime. I'll be out there laying. Like, yeah, you said light outside. I be wide on like this. Get count sheep. I just got the legend just later. Like, that. <laughs> wishing uh, other kids out running around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, uh, don't let it be school time. I'm at eight o'clock, and she meant it. But come six o'clock, when I had to get up, it wasn't no dragging me. I was able to. See, it was different. From 6 o'clock, I was able to get up, full of energy, run down the steps where there was a meal, eggs, bacon, toast, wintertime, cream of wheat, oatmeal, eat, be full of energy, be ready to go. And my day, and we were a different breed and set of children because the lifestyle was different. We could be taught. Because the light at school, because the lifestyle was there. When the hunger, kids are going to school hungry. They can't yeah. concentrate. That's right. They're going to school mentally messed up because of instability. They can't concentrate. They're going to school because breakfast that they found is candy and sugary stuff, too much sugar. And they all amped up. They can't concentrate. Now you got the teacher that they don't want to combat that. So they ain't giving it they off. It's perfect storms. That's the next thing. That's the next thing. Now they're zombies. Now they can't learn because they're zombies. Did you hear me, Johnny? Think about that. Run. <laughs> Johnny got all kinds of stuff coursing through his body. He, did you hear me? No, I ain't heard you. Not doped up on that stuff. That's right. As soon as he gets a little more active, they, well, he ain't got high enough doses. So they hit him with some more. <laughs> See? Returning back to simplicity. All right. But that sounds too simple. So people are bucking against that. That ain't what we need. We need more laws. Than blah, blah, blah. Like they have about gun control. We need more laws. Blah, blah, blah. Look, my granddaddy had guns. My uncles had guns. 
folk been having guns. They ain't just started buying guns since 2016. Right. And it wasn't last year. We, I knew guns. We played guns. We played guns. Pa, pa, pa. Huh? Huh? No cap guns. You put the cap in there. Pa. We were pa. Got you. Then all you, man, I shot you, man. You won't be dead. And you didn't get me because I died. Then when I died. But you didn't go to school worried about there's somebody coming in shooting it up. That's right. And now that's what you better be worried about. You didn't go to work worried about if somebody coming in there and shoot it up. That's right. But now that's what you better be worried about. Case in point down in Virginia Beach. Yes, oh, it's not just the gun, it's the fact that here and here is messed up. It's messed up, and it's in the world that's messed up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is. So, when you put a load, heavy load on top of another heavy load on top of another heavy load, and the thing that you're stacking it on is weak. Boom. Something got to give. Something got to give. When you create a society as what this society is, something got to give. The people ain't just been getting fired, but a society like our people had it when years ago when somebody came into calamity because it's based on the Almighty's law. If thy brother fall into decay, you should not forbear. That's why the Almighty wrote that. If thy brother waxing poor among you, you should not forbear to help him. It ain't like we just getting fired. We have people that got fired in the 50s and 60s, but the neighborhood would rally. And they say for a minute, hey, we gonna we came up with 500. Six hundred thousand dollars help you and your family till you can get you another That's job. Right. Now that person ain't feeling the full brunt of that downsize or that fine. He's not feeling that, and he can think with it. Well, let me maneuver and see how I can get through this thing. But you got a society that's out of whack. Now you telling that dude, man, you gone with no compassion, no mercy. You gone. You out of here. And he feeling the grips of other things that's going on. I'll be back. I'll be back. I'm about to tell them they're gonna find me by day. Let me know. If I can be late or I can take off. All right. You better. Because that's looking out for yourself. Or look out for yourself while you're there. Because this, you pass all the guns, you're more stringent. Same people buy guns every day. That don't mean they ain't going to go insane after they get the gun. The guns ain't the fact that they're illegal. Most of the people that shoot up, they have legally purchased the gun. That's not the problem. The problem is the stress of life. The life that's created, the society that's been created for people to live in. Because they don't need guns. They want to kill you. They're going to find a way to kill you. Car, just high stress. Let me get through this. Boy, so much. But the prophet was able to effectually change and that's what we are here to do. And my brother said earlier, if you know the Almighty, you're walking with the Almighty. We are here to, to show forth the glory of Yah. Oh, yeah. And try to change lives of people. Enhance lives of people. And we're not doing it by putting nobody down. We're not doing it by cussing nobody out. Right. We're not doing it by grabbing bullhorns and shouting at folks and all that kind of we're doing it by showing them that there is something better out there. Oh, yeah. 
Vashon me is some that out there. Man, who are you? Why are you acting like that? Why are you carry yourself like that? How much time you got? Sit down. That's why I keep on trying to Man, you, you, everything you do to show the Almighty the glory, that, that's a, the fringes, that's a, that, that's a, that's a feather your cap. Run on my job, he said, man, he said, what is, a couple weeks, he said, what is those? He said, nah, I know what they are. He said, but what are those? And then I started breaking down to him what it is. He said, yeah, I see the people up the street, they be wearing them too. I said, they tried to. <laughs> and then I broke that down. He said, yeah, they don't. They don't have no blue on them. All right. He said, uh, he said see? Because I'm not worried about them knowing if I'm in. See, when you're trying to blend in, and I don't know. No, no. Yeah, you worry about I'm not worried about that now. You're supposed to know who I am. Um, yeah. Not just by name, say, but by action. Now, am I going to make mistakes? Yeah, but like I said, we know how to deal with that too. But you're still supposed to know who I am. Because there ain't a Christian that don't make no mistake. There ain't no Muslim that don't make no mistake. When you understand scripture, Solomon said, ain't a man that lives in a sin and not. So don't get too happy to jump on me when you see me making mistakes, is it? Because there's a ton of mistakes I know you still making in the sight of Yah. Um, that he will really condemn you for. And I've given them up. But we're seeking to effectually help change people's lives. Um, yeah. By glorifying Yah. And so he's Naaman said again in verse 17 of 2 Kings chapter 5. Naaman said, Shall there not then, I pray thee, be given a, to thy servant two mules of burden of earth? That's a question. Can I give you to these two mules? Can I just give you them? For thy servant, meaning himself, thy servant will henceforth offer neither burnt offering nor sacrifices unto the idols of my people. He called them idols. But I will only sacrifice to Yah. When I go home, when I go back to Syria, I will only sacrifice to Yah. I don't know what nobody else will see, but I will only build a shrine and sacrifice to the Most High Yah, the oh, Elohim of Israel. Oh, but in this thing, Yahweh pardon us, sir. Because when I go back home, I still got to be around my people. And they do what they do. And although I know now who to serve, they don't serve whom they've been accustomed to serve. But Yahweh pardon thy servant, that when my master go into the house of the deity, his deity to worship there, he lean on my hand. In other words, where he goeth, being his attendant, I have to go with him too, being his right hand man. Right. So don't, so I'm asking you to ask the Almighty to pardon me that when he see me go in the house of his deity with him, know that my heart is not going there for idol worship. I'm going there because it's my job. Right. See, that's why you can't judge that to the sight of your eyes and simply what you hear. Because oh, you God. might see people doing, oh, I saw Brother Aaron. I saw him going to church. Boy, and he and he a moron. He ain't supposed to be in that Catholic church. Oh, I saw him. Ooh, wait till I call somebody and tell him. Ooh, ooh. I saw that brother at the store working. Ooh, he picked up that big box of bacon, pork bacon, and was like, slinging it all over. Ooh, wait till I tell somebody. Wait till I get home, call him up, and tell everybody in this. Who he had that poor baby, and he was standing. He didn't put me doing. <laughs> All right, Jerry, get some mess started. Because off the side of their eyes and the hand of their head. All right. But you haven't done what the Almighty said, and that is 
look into the person's heart and the spirit. Because him stacking it on the walls is one thing. If somebody comes to him with a plate full of it and throw it down and say, eat this, that's another thing. If his spirit is with the Almighty, he'll tell a man, you got to kill me first. Can't be so quick to judge. And that's why he was saying, not only that, he was asking him, being a man of Elohim, will you take this petition to the Almighty for me? That when he see me do my occupation, know that that's my occupation, but know now my heart is with him. That when I bow down myself in the house of my master's deity, may Yahweh pardon me. Because there's that fine line of doing what the king want me to do and serving Yah as well. And the prophet said unto him, go in peace. He said, no, nah, dude, that ain't that can't accept that. He said, go in peace, go in peace. You'll be fine. Because Yahweh know the hearts of men. So he departed from him a little way. Naaman started on his way back to his country. And he just got a little way away from Elisha. But Gehazi, the servant of Elisha. But Gehazi was there. And he said, man, he giving all that up? He giving all that up? So Gehazi had not the spirit to glorify the Almighty. Even though he was a servant of Elisha, he didn't have the spirit to glorify Yah. All he could see was the riches. That he gave up. But Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of Elohim, said, Behold, my master has spared name in this Syrian, and not receiving at his hand that which he brought. But as the master liveth, I will run after him and take some of what. Of him. And the will say, Has Yahweh lived? I will run after him and take somewhat of him. Uh, Elisha, my master, he, he didn't know he should take this stuff. But as y'all live, he didn't bring all that around this long way for nothing. All right. He should not have to go home with all that. <laughs> I'm going to go get some of this. <laughs> I think old man made a mistake. I'm going to go get some of that. <laughs> so Gehazi followed after Naaman. And when Naaman saw him running after him, he lighted down from the chariot to meet him and said, Is all well? And he said, All is well. My master, now, see, there's a couple of things, dynamics here. You wonder why he's cursed. See, the story is telling you, you have to see what's here and you see what's not here. What's, what do you see that's not here? It's not to tell him to go after the name. I mean, to go after the name. What else do you see? I want you to put on your eyes, see what you. Yeah, and, and why will he do that? Because he wanted something very good. He had his own dream, his own intention. Well, let me, let me show you what's here. Thou should not covet. Oh, uh, yeah. He's breaking, see, it's not, he's breaking law already. Yes, sir. Covenant. That's what I'm saying. You have to see the start. He's breaking law. Thou should not covet. Who was the gifts brought for? They were brought and offered to Elisha. So if the gifts was lost, that was his. It wasn't never offered to Gehazi. But the minute Gehazi saw it, Gehazi started to covet what was offered to him. He's coveting. Thou shall not covet. Now that he's coveting it, meaning he desiring it, he desiring what was offered to him. Now that he's desiring it, now he chases after him. And now what's the next thing he's doing? Lying. He's lying. 
He's lying. All is well. My master has sent me. Alicia didn't send him nowhere. nowhere. Didn't even know he had left. Didn't know he went to follow that man. But he said, my master has sent me saying, behold, even now, there be come to me from Mount Ephraim two young, and now he's making up a big story. <laughs> two young men of the sons of the prophets. Give them, I pray thee, a talent of silver and two changes of garment. He done really made up a tale. Mm. Naaman said, be content. Take two talents. And he urged him and bound the two talents of silver in the two bags with two changes of raiment and laid them upon the two of his servants. And they bare them before him. And when he came to the tower, when Gehazi came to the tower, when he got back, he took them from their hand and bestowed them in the house. And he let the men go and they departed. So Naaman sent two servants. It was, it was so much that the two servants carried the stuff back with Gehazi. And Gehazi got them back to the tower. He put them in the tower and shook the young man's hand and said, Now y'all can go back. Leave. Thank you. Appreciate go ahead. Because he didn't want to get busted. Go. <laughs> but he went in. See? This is the power of being with y'all. He went in and stood before his master. And Alicia said unto him, When's coming to Algehazi? And he said, Thy servant, I ain't went nowhere. Lying again. See how he's sliding, sliding, sliding in the darkness. See, a curse don't, a curse, this is important, so you can see this. A curse won't necessarily come upon you for a mistake. Even though you might read something and you say, well, they, they did one thing. Like when the Almighty cursed Mary. You see, when she did one thing, you say, well, why would he curse her? That's one thing. But what the Almighty know is if she is allowed to do that one thing one time, she won't stop. She'll speak against him again and again and again and again. So as an example, to nip it in the bud, he hit her with something so severe that it took care of all that. Because the Almighty know we fallible. And he know there can be a mistake. All men make them. But there come a point, I saw I explained, there come a point where a mistake turns into a conscious decision. And it ain't no mistake no more. Where you slipped up and did something wrong turns into consciously doing things wrong. That's not no mistake. And here's the pattern. He went from mistake to consciously regressing, regressing, regressing. And that's why the Almighty is going to deal with him as he's going to deal with him. Because he's coming, we see he's lying, and he's lying to cover one lie, to cover another lie. Well, what, if he's allowed to, what are he going to do after that? He's going to lie again to cover him because now he got to keep on doing it. Huh? Not if you don't want the truth. Not if you don't want the truth. You got to. He said, I want nowhere. And he said unto him, now watch the prophet. Elisha said unto him, do what I'm telling y'all. See, we won't, y'all won't believe it. Y'all won't believe it. Y'all think on the end then y'all won't believe you think Brother Aaron flapping his gun. But the book is shown. This is what I'm talking about, the power of the spirit. When you deal with the spirit, the prophet told him, Went not my heart with you. Not nah, physically, but my heart as I sat here. As I sat back here, 
my spirit went with you. And I knew where you went. In my spirit, I knew what happened. Yeah, did. That's why sometimes uh, they don't have to, that's why a joke would come home sometimes and the wife is sitting there and she said, man, you know, she might hit you with this. She might hit her husband with this. Baby, where you been? I ain't been nowhere. I ain't been nowhere. Hey. She can sense it. So she can sense it. Because her spirit had went with him. Her spirit is the Almighty deal with the spirit. And he'll put something there. Men too. Remember where you been? I ain't with nowhere. Me and the girls. Me and the girls. It's, So even right now that you come back to me, your spirit is telling me something different. He told him here, he said, your children, you can sense something. It's wrong. Where you go? They hit the door. Hey, hey, come here. Where you been? Uh, I ain't I ain't. I ain't been up there with Ricky, especially if they do that. I ain't been up there with Ricky. Who said anything about Ricky? <laughs> I ain't said one word about Ricky. No, there your key indicator right there. Who said anything? Who brought Ricky up? I said, where you been? When you told me you ain't been with Ricky, that means exactly that's where you been. <laughs> Think not my spirit didn't know? There's something the Almighty is going to deal with you. He said, think not my heart went with thee when the man turned again from his chariot to me. His spirit went with him so that he saw that Naaman got down off his chariot and they interact. Then he asked him, is it time to receive money and receive garments and olive yards and vineyards and sheep, and oxen, and men servant, and maid servant. Was it time? Was this the time to do that? Surely, if it was, then I would have took the stuff myself. He said, "But this is not the time." So, because of your greed, because of your transgression. Because of what you was willing to do. Because of your spirit. The spirit that you have. Cursed the leprosy that we cleansed Naaman of. To cleave unto you and unto your seed your posterity forever. Not only wanted to be on me or on you, I wanted to be on your posterity or your seed so that people can know. See, again, when we started this, and that's the thing, so um, we so amped up on because it's white. But it's bigger than that. It's bigger than that. And that's why TC, it ain't about, it is, but it's not about black and white. That is an indicator of the seed, just like the indicator of the seed of Cain. It's a sign. It's a sign. That's why the Almighty told him, not to hate him so that you can do something to him. It's a sign. That when men see him, that's exactly what he, he said. No, I'll put this sign on you so that when men see you, as a matter of fact, they don't try to kill you. Because I, if they just arbitrarily try to kill you, 
murdering you like you were murdering, then I got to judge them. Because I have been murdered wrong for all souls. If they are bigot and a hater and hateful of hatred like you, then I have to judge them the same way I judge you. Because I'm the Elohim of justice and judgment. And I'm not a respectable person. So this sign is on them so that they will know the type of person they deal with. So that they know they're dealing with a person that have certain characteristics, certain traits, certain spirits. Sure, they come up with doctrines of superiority because they are inferior. Sure, they come up with ways of conniving because this is how they must live in the world. They're not blessed. This is true. This is not to be talking about or to be insulted. This is true. As I said, it's true across the board. It's true in the animal kingdom. Anything that is devoid of its natural pigmentation and color, from the albino alligator to the albino lion to the white, and they don't even say albino, from the white lion to the white alligator to the white tiger to the punk, anything. They let you know this is a fragmented descendant of the species. And if there is white lion, that white lion is so far vested into the jungle. Because they even venture out and go around the regular lion, he puts his life in jeopardy. So there's a certain way he even has to be in the jungle. The alligator the same way. There's a certain way he had to even maneuver in the waters. This man. And the man that have these characteristics. See, when you understand that, then you will understand the world you live in. My job is not to prove to you that I'm worthy of being your friend. Because the African or the, per or the person in the original nature, they do, they go out of their way. It's, it's historic. It's historic. They go out their way to accept. Others. We go out our way to accept others. Much we might not like it. They bring in young women from another nationality, and as soon as they hit the door, much of you might not like it, as soon as they hit the door, the whole family make them well. We treat them like they want to get on in here, talk to them like they want. They be scared, like, oh. Because they ain't never been dealt with like that. Get in here. Let me hear my own company. Yeah, go, oh, girl. They nervous all get out. Your mama scared me. Nah, that's, nobody pay her no attention. <laughs> but we ain't going to treat them like they ain't nothing different than nobody else in the family. But now, often cases, they take you home. Mm -hmm. like you cut the tension with a knife. Yeah. Girl, don't leave me. Yeah. And Uncle over there is trying, uh, sharpening his blade. Daddy over there, blowing down the barrel of it. <laughs> no, no, no. You leave wherever you go, I go. You don't even want to be alone. So, my, so the job, when, when it's not being that, that's how life is. That's the rule. My job is not to make you feel comfortable. Yo, my job is to get you or you have to make me feel comfortable. Given the nature, because I see the sun. And he went out 
of his presence. Now watch, what's the sign? I didn't write this, so don't get mad at me. What's the sign? He went out from his presence. A leopard. A leopard. As white. As white. As snow. As snow. I did not write that. But that's the sign. The same way when they wanted to reverse things and say you was cursed, they say the sign was that you was turned black. And that's why they never wanted you to read. So you would read and see. They couldn't reverse the words of the page, so they just kept you from it. But you see here, he said he went from his presence, a leper as white as snow. Miriam was cursed, a leper as white as snow. Moses put his hand in the bosom as a sign, and when he drew it out, it was, behold, it was lepers, white as snow. Yeah. Now, can the curse be reversed? Or can one who had the curse be accepted? Sure, he can. For the mercy of Yah endure forever. Yeah. It endure forever. And he can be accepted if, if he do the same thing. And an Israelite have to do to be accepted by Yah. And what's that? Go to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 53. You have to do the same thing that Israel have to do. There's a curse on us. All right. Been on us for generations. Yes, sir. And what's the requirement for us to get off from under the curse? Return back to Yah. Return back to Yah. Walk in all his ways. Walk in all his ways. With all our what? All your heart. And all our what? All your might. And all our what? And all your soul. Mean that's a prerequisite for us to get off from under the curse. Well, that's the same prerequisite for anybody. That's why the Almighty says in the book, of Isaiah, the 56th chapter. Hallelujah. Verse 1. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 56, verse 1. Thus said Yahweh. Keep ye judgment and do justice. What does Yahweh want you to keep? Judgment. Judgment. And justice. And justice. These are the things he built upon. Judgment and justice. And he said, this is what I want you to keep. This is what establishes a people. This is what establishes a civilization. This is what establishes mankind. Justice and judgment. Fairly disputed. Fairly distributed to all. To all. Equally given out to all. Young, old, rich, poor, black, white, fall out the sky purple. Fairly given across the board. Justice and justice. To the police officer and them that's entrusted with justice and judgment to the criminal. For my salvation is near to come. For and my, my righteousness to be revealed. Because this is part of his salvation. This is part of Yahweh's righteousness. We have corrupted even that. Because we want to be partial in justice and judgment. That partiality comes not out the mouth of Yah. We've learned, or we've not learned, we've instilled and accepted the way of the heathen. 
Go ahead. Blessed is the man. Because he said, blessed, blessed is the man. Blessed is the man that does this. And the son of man that lay hold on it. Blessed is the son of man that lay hold on this. That keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it. That's why you, the right is to tell the stranger. The right is to tell everybody about the Sabbath day. To teach everybody the justice and the judgment of Yah. Because the skinny is we curse, but the whole earth is cursed. That's why the Almighty says, I will send you Eliah the prophet, that he come. And do what he do, least the Almighty smite the earth with a curse. The whole earth with a curse. Blessed is the son of is the man that does this. Blessed is the son of man that lay hold on this. That keep the Sabbath from polluting it. And that keep his hand. From doing any evil. Hallelujah. But then he said, Neither let the son of the stranger that have joined himself to the Almighty. He must, in other words, what was that stranger do? Same, Same thing in Israel. He must join himself not to me, not to you. He must join himself and seek him after him that even created him, and that's the most high. Then the Almighty said, don't let the fact that the sign of this curse upon him be the thing that hold him back. Because a couple of things he's getting ready to mention here. Neither let the son of the stranger that have joined himself unto Yah speak and say, Yahweh have utterly separated me from his people. And once that sign was put on him, that's what happened. Separation. Gehazi didn't stay there with Elisha. Once that sign was put on him, oh, he, boom. Zia didn't stay there. Oh, whoop, boom. Cain didn't, didn't stay. Exit. Run. On the run, a fugitive. That's a matter of fact. That we can't. I'm a fugitive in the earth, in all the earth. The greater truth is that the population of people that's not brown and black, if you want to use color, they are minority in the world. I ain't talking about countries. I said when you say worldly, they are minorities. That's why they came up with what they call the caste system. The caste system is a system that puts all black and brown people back. Puts them back, like in Vietnam, where you had to go to the hills. And once the GIs went to the hills, they saw black being the knees dark as they was. When you go to India and you go down by the river where they do the laundry and they do all the Low medial things. This is where the people that are black, darker than you and I, this is where they reside. In the Philippines, in the jungles, the darker, that's where they reside. Miss, I just saw some of y'all watching the documentary the other day. Miss Tahiti, that one Miss Tahiti, she's very fair skinned. Where the Tahitian people revolted against her, where they had to take the crown from her. They stripped the crown off of her. Because the Tahitian people, the real Tahitian people, say, she don't look nothing like us. Mm. She's not our epitome. She's not our standard. That's something y'all set up with the help of some other folks that want us to accept that as being beautiful. We walk around here with nappy afros, naturals. And we dark. Y'all done gave us this light complected woman with straight hair. That's not us. And we reject her. They made such a ruckus, they took the crown off her head. 
But when you go to these places, they forgive you the same thing they give you here. Fair scheme. Even my brother that they assassinated. That's what he was ready to tell the world when he came to the UN. I'm on my Qaddafi. And he told him, I'm a burker. Well, many people don't know what a burqa is, but he was ready to lay out the history of a burqa and what a burqa is and how burqas came to be about. That's why the people that he effectually fought for in Libya, and they'll tell you that so that you will hate him, get you on a emotional trip so you will hate him. He was a dictator, but the people he fought for in Libya, just like Fidel Castro, they were the black and brown people in this country of Libya. The rebels and the renegades that fought in the revolution against him were the fairest skinned people of Libya. He was going to spill the beans, educate people, and they assassinate him. Because the truth of the matter is the fairer the skin, the younger the species. And the less in number. That was the most potent and powerful thing that Elder came up with. And I knew why he came up with it. And I was happy. That's why I said never had to be never had to be scared to teach the truth. Because I said, sure. I said, sure. Your feth was black. How can he not be black? If Shem was black. And Cam was black. And I know Cam was black because Cam, that's how it's pronounced. Cam. Means tropical, means burnt. That's where they get the term comedic. And if he is Noah's son and he was black, then his brother, Shem, he was black. And if Shem was black, then that means your best was black. And when the great elder went and pulled that up, he came back to us and he said, Have you seen the cheddar man? All right. Black and the man. cheddar man was black. Blue eyes. With blue eyes. Yes. And straight hair. Black hair. And they done took the cheddar man to Europe and it done it's done broke a lot of hearts yeah. that believe in white supremacy. Because <laughs> this European scientist said, This our daddy. He's the <laughs> oldest living European being that we have on earth to this day. This our daddy. This is where we come from. This cheddar man. And they had white supremacists outside the museum when they gave the thing. And boy, you should have you should have seen them. They were ready to cry when those scientists broke him out. The cheddar man, like cheddar cheese. The cheddar man. All in all European. One of my favorite rap groups, that's why they got a song Fear of a Black Planet. When this planet knew righteousness to some degree, when this planet knew, had a sense of what was right and wrong, it was dominated by people. Of dark hue. And the ancient knowledge that have come out came from people of dark hue, did not come of people from a lighter hue. As I said, all the Greeks never studied, never studied each other. Do you know where the Greeks went to get their philosophy? Socrates, Aristotle. They went down into Egypt. 
They went down into Egypt. And then they went all across the middle of what they called the Alibet was given to the Europeans. That's another reason why I just, that's another reason why I'm not so hyped. I know it is the ancient form, but like I said, it's the stem form. And I know we're going to break, we're going to break it five, y'all. All right. All right. It's the stem form. So it's the simplest form. But that's the language that even the Europeans spoke. Ah, uh, ah, uh, get, ah, uh, da. But uh, I, because he was trenched in that, he had never went no further than that until advanced people from advanced civilization came formulating other vowel sounds and just ah, uh. they were able to formulate e, u, e. They were able to sound make other sounds. While the interest in the European was just a uh, 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 a grunt. That's why you just grunt. Uh, uh. He was interested in that. And for centuries, other civilizations, Timbuktu, Summer, Akak, they have already built up languages. Pictographic or not, they already have built up language with different ways of vowel pronunciation. They took this to European places. This is the truth. For all men, that all men may know where they come from. Hallelujah. And that's why all might say, we're not gonna let even though I put signs on, I'm not going to let that be the determining factor as to whether or not they can get to me. I'm not dealing in what y'all dealing. Y'all dealing petty stuff. I'm dealing in the person's spirit. And if I can meet that Gentile, as we call him, and in his spirit, he fully converts to the most high. Even if he cannot come here, this is not the time, because this is not the house y'all talking about. If he converts, then I will accept him with open arms. If he converts and the spirit of Yah is able to convert him fully. Hallelujah. Because then his color is not reflectatory of who he is. Yeah, all right. And I'd rather have him if he won't steal from me, if he won't murder me, if he won't covet if he won't if he will give himself to the sabbath day if he will do the things as the almighty is saying here i'd rather have him with me as that clan of this i'd rather have him with me than to worry about somebody that looked like me but i gotta worry about him stabbing me in my back oh, and committing right. all kinds of atrocities right. against me i right. must be a fool to be on something petty and accept one and not accept the other. Because my pettiness, and I don't care what leader or what teacher or what is like, don't like. Tune out. But now for full disclosure, I'm going to tell you that ain't just going to happen. Well, you're going to get a bunch of them like that. But that's what you do with every man, that's what you do with your brother. Neither let the son of the spring that have joined himself to Yah speak, saying, Yahweh have utterly separated me from his people. Neither let the eunuch, because the eunuch, because of his condition, he said, I'm cut off. I can't be with Yah people. I can't be with the most. I'm cut off because my condition. Now, I said, we get beyond your condition. Where your heart? Your heart with me? All right. Your spirit with me? All right. Okay, so what? That's your condition. We be, I'm beyond that. Come on. Go with me. For thus says Yahweh to the eunuch that keep my Sabbath and choose the things that please me. 
and take hold of my covenant. Even to them who I give in my house and within my wall a place and a name that's better than sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name. They can break that. That will not be cut off. Also the son of the stranger that joined himself, and that's key, that's what you must that's what you must understand. Ain't talking about I got well, I can go give me some advice. I can give me a white woman. Uh, and she ain't doing nothing. She ain't converted. She ain't done what Ruth did. He talking about conversion of spirit, like every single soul that must come to him. The son of the stranger that joined himself to Yah to serve Yah. Now he ain't talking about having no, no Gentile, but, and he's still talking about some Christ. Yeah. Yahshua. Like, no, nah, you, you ain't fit to build. You didn't come out. Or got a superiority complex. You, you ain't fit to be. You'll know what to look for if they be accepted. To love the name of Yah. Hallelujah. To be his servants. Everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from violating it and taking hold of my covenant. Even them. Because it ain't just about white. It's it's about all souls. Maybe the person Hindu. Maybe your best buddy Hindu. Maybe a, a Sikh. Man, it ain't about, see, get out of the pettiness. That's right. That world I told you earlier, that false world, where you see so much and you can't see what's real. Get out of that. I don't care. Two shakes of a lamb tell about Donald Trump. But people are so petty. But like I said, I don't have a skin in the game, but people are so petty that when he sat down, they talked about him when he used to tweet and called a little dude over there Rocket Man. He's going to get some started. He's going to tell the war, insulting that man like that, calling him a name like that. He's going this, he's going that. Because they're so petty because somebody told him you were a Republican and you were a Democrat and you this and you that. They're so petty. Then he reverses it and said, well, I did call him a lot of names. He called me a lot of names. So we set up a meeting. We're going to talk to one another. Maybe we can get something done. So he go and talk to him. But now they talk about him because he talked to him. Can't nobody. Huh? What did he do that for? He done went out there and talked to him. He done so <laughs> he came and told me, he said, by talking to him, at least I might have avoided war. Now we find the little dude don't have no honor, but neither does he. But we knew that. But I still would rather them, even to the kingdom come, I'd rather them sit down. And talk oh. to one another right. as opposed to talking at one another when right. you got the perspective of both of them getting ready to do this and in a bunch of lies. A bunch of, lies. A bunch of lies that shouldn't be ended. That's right. But people are so panicked. Because they don't like it. Well, I don't care nothing about him either. But at least he displayed he has some sense trying to handle it like that. Because that's what peaceful rulers used to do. They used to try to talk to bring things to resolution as opposed to going to all-out war.
That's why people on the most mature when you say you don't vote. That's why they fall back, because they emotion. They get emotion. Ah, yeah, ah, yeah, yeah. Well, calm down. Calm down. Pettiness. And the Almighty is not petty. Oh, God. Enough, Patty. So things that we think matter to him don't matter to him. And can the fact that they curse is with them? Yes. Can they break that? Yes. They break it the same way. They break it the same way that you and I and any other person that want to come to the Almighty would do so. And that is by accepting him, him only, with all your heart, all the soul, all the mind. Creators, and I can teach you. I don't care if nobody disagrees. I can teach you. It's in the book. Very said I got one way. He said, I'm the judge of all the earth. I judge with one way. And I judge with equity. I judge with fairness. I judge with purity. I'm looking for things that you as men don't know how to look for. I guess one, one question on that more was really uh, why did he pass it down to the generations if we if we well like I, I said I mean, he part about the change, but you know I'm like he got carried this forever and his generation may not even know what he did. He passed it down to his generations so that you might know whom you deal that your generation might know whom you're dealing with. See let me, let me show you why he would pass it down to generations real quick. Go to the book of Isaiah. You got a lovely little son back there, don't you? Yes, sir. Hmm? Remember what we talked about last week? Who with me? Remember? Yeah, y'all look like y'all getting worn out back there. So I'm going to have to get the break. Y'all look like y'all wearing out, boy. Remember what we talked about last week? Well, I know y'all don't. <coughs> The child, what is a child composed of? His parents. His parents. His environment. His Who parents. Who raised him. What, well, namely his parents. That's why the Almighty said, why did he take two and make them one? That they might produce a what? Elohim we see. Elohim we see. That's what we talk about. Because what that child is a manifestation of the two people that have come together and mixed. As I said last week, and I say it again, that's why you can see things that you should know that's in you, you see them in your child. And you see things from the mother, being a father, you say, well, that's his own mama. And vice versa. When you're in tune with yourself, you can see these things. Because you know what you have passed on to your child. I know what I passed on. That's why that's what frustrates me. When I see what I passed on that I know is a hamper to me and I see it manifested in them, that's when I get out of it. Or there's a hamper to them. That's when I get out. Man, stop that. I'm not getting at them because I'm necessarily mad with them or angry or trying to. I'm getting at them because I see my setback. I see what hold me back. I see what's negative in me and have me where I'm at, that I'm not enjoying the best part of my life, and I don't want them to be in that same boat. So I got to try to negate it when I see it, because I recognize that man, because that man is me. Oh, God. Oh, God. So why would the Almighty put the sign that's on Gehazi on his descendants? Because Gehazi gonna have children, 
and he gonna have children, he is going to pass on what? The same his same essence to his children. What essence did we find out he had? Coveting, lying, lying, lying conniving, scheming. That's going into his children. So his child is more or less going to be a what? Conniving, conniving scheming, coveting, doing things, subverting things. And then they're going to have a generation. Well, what's going to happen to that generation? Generation of what? Liars, covetous, schemers, it passes. And as a result, the Almighty said, I put a son, just like Cain. I put a son up. Cain said, I slew a man. Well, his son said, if he be, if he be justified for slaying a man, then I'll be justified double what he did. Because I slew a man and bruised a man. Because I'm a chip off the old law. So the Almighty wants you to know what you're dealing with. Isaiah. Yes, sir. Look what he said. 14 chapter. Oh, uh, yeah. Verse 1. Uh uh. So we can get to that break. Like I said, y'all wearing out. Watch what he said. He talked about, he has talked about Lucifer. But I want to pick it up at the 20th verse. 20. They expedite everything. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 20. Because a lot of people are going to say, well, why this? If he told me, ain't that just loose? Why this? But watch what he says. Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial. Uh -huh. Because thou hast destroyed thy land. You so terrible. You destroyed thy land. And slain thy people. You would even slay your own people. The seed of evil doers. The seed of evil doers. Shall never be renowned. Shall not be known forever. <coughs> Prepare slaughter then, for his children. So as a result, I know that this is your doing. But as a result, prepare slaughter for his children. For the iniquity. Of their fathers. For the iniquity of the fathers. They do, go ahead. That they do not rise. Yes. Nor possess the land. Yes. Nor feel the face of the world with sin. Why? Because he going to pass on to them. Them same traits and characteristics. And the way he ruled. They going to rule the same way. Think that another Trump that come out of this Trump loins would think to rule the same way that his father is ruled when he have his father's DNA in him? Bush huh? Bush huh? Bush Hello? Hello? Exact same way. Had a shocking eye to his <laughs> Except there be divine intervention. They're gonna be the same thing. The boy, the man, that's why I said that's why they clap. The young man in North Korea. I watched the show on them. Their family. And he started with he learned what he learned from his father and from his grandfather. They did a show on them. They talking about he out here assassinating people that are folks. That's everything. That was a thing. What? <laughs> yeah. They moved on, folks. Yeah. Now he, but with each regressive here, he's just a little worse than all the rest of them. But he learned, he learned from who went before him. This is how we rule, baby. <laughs> and if he produced somebody, and nobody get to it. And guess what? It'd be the same way. So this this is their son. The 
the sun that Gehazi that they stemmed from Gehazi and what Gehazi was about, that was placed on them. That's why I said, don't just be caught up in the colorization. Look at what's behind it. Look at the character. Do they do they still do these, you see these traits when you deal with them that have that something? Do you see these traits? Can they smile? Huh? And tell you one thing, deceiving you. And doing something else? Oh, we never move ever. We never move y'all off and down here. We know y'all been here for years. And then this week they just signed it. Out of all that fighting, they just signed it and said, go ahead and finish FC Cincinnati. Finish doing the gentrification. We're just gonna give you people a little money and and tell them to go find some place. Yeah. We'll go find where. But the, all that rambling and fuzzing, it was just a bunch of smiles. And all along, they already knew what they were going to do. It was deceit. It was deceit. They've been looked at that land. They've been covered at that land. They had other places they could go. They go to they could go up to Milford where they put the headquarters to run the team at. Big old lavish building to run the team up there in Milford. Whole lot of land. Whole bunch of land. But they come down in the heart of the city and put the stadium down there. Mm. They, have, they have quite a few places on the table. But they came with a smile. Grin. Colors. Like I told you, and then we're going to break. Like I told y'all, the one, my one job, the guy, they brought they Probably come to buy it, sent the little dude down, and he, he gave up down, spent eight hours a whole work day festive. He was changing shirts <clears throat> for the different centers. Had to change, get everybody laughing and everything, and telling people what wasn't gonna happen, what was gonna happen, and things wasn't gonna really be all this. And they got in there and got entrenched. They got entrenched and things don't Done got turned upside down. Everybody was sitting there clapping in the office and joining with him as he got everybody around. See, I was sitting there while he was doing. I was just sitting there like, see through. And why you ain't? Like, come on, now get in. Like, so what's wrong with you? And then won't think I'm the crazy one. Then who's crazy now? I seen this. I know it ain't doing nothing but getting the dog a pony show. <coughs> so it is a sign. It's a sign. It's not a sign, and it's a curse by y'all. Don't mean it can't be broken. But it's gonna take design and event. It's gonna take design and event. Any other comments from anybody? We get ready to break. I say no, we just we <laughs> bread. He's touching the seats. <laughs> Rolling the eyes. Pray for his ass, man. Pray for his ass. That might be the only half. See, there might not be a second half. But I'm looking at it. 
I see the sun. I, 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 I see the sun. I see the light. Yeah, I see the sun. I, I see the sun. You eat and sing, and that's and it's just a bit of this. You preach the song. We we out of here. <laughs> let's let's take up a break. There's no other comment. Blessed be Yahweh, true and living Elohim of Israel, creator of the heaven, the earth, the sea, and all that in the midst. To you and you only belong all glory, all honor, all majesty, all praise. We thank and we exalt thee in thee only. We uplift thy holy name. We call upon thee to be with us in this time, in this day, in this age, to walk with us, carry us, to protect us, to show us that you and you alone are still ruler and the rock of all ages, the dependable one. Be our shelter in the time of the storm. Carry us through when we are weak. Make us strong. Oh, Father Yahweh, to build us up, to continue to enlighten us with knowledge, wisdom, and understand that we may come unto thee and dwell with thee in the fullness, sense of oneness, to live up to what you have bestowed upon us, that we may carry out our duties in this earth all the days of our life, that we have no regrets once we come in our presence and meet thee, but that there only be joy and the fullness of promises fulfilled. Oh, Father Yahweh, we bless thee, we ask thee, continually be with us day and night, keeping us in thy bosom. This we pray unto thee by saying hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. praise the mighty Yahweh, Yah is righteous all the time, hallelujah. Thank you.